Hello everyone. This time around, I want to talk about sports teams and who should own their uh, home venue. So, you know, an arena for the Flames, a stadium for the Stampeders, you know, that, that sort of thing. Who should own them? Now, uh, so that means who should build them as well. Now, there's a couple of schools of thought on that, and now before, but before I get into that, I'm going to say this comes up as a result of the current ongoing brouhaha about a new arena for the Flames, and uh, quite frankly, uh, uh, you know, now the Flames are down to electioneering pressure tactics and that kind of bullshit, and uh, basically they're trying to blackmail the uh, city into caving and giving them a handout. Now, I certainly hope the city of Calgary stands its ground and does not give them the handouts they want, which include everything from, uh, you know, pay for a fair chunk of it to exemptions from property taxes. Okay, so uh, they're, 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 and they're not getting what they want. So now they've taken to... Uh, uh, well, uh, you say, well, I guess, uh, you know, all bets are off for the future, really, which is a veiled threat to move the team. Now, where the hell are they going to move the team to? That's the question. But quite frankly, if they're going to be that uh, uh, ridiculous about things, they can piss off to another city for all I care. I do not care about the Flames. Any, I do not care about the Stampeders. I do not care about the sports teams. And I expect a very, very large proportion of the city residents do not care about the sports teams. So uh, we should not be giving them a handout, okay? This is what it comes down to. So this is the brouhaha. And uh, they, basically they've cut off negotiations and uh, somehow... Uh, if you looked at some of the discussion, it's obviously Mayor Nenshi's fault. Now, it's not his fault. He doesn't have the final say in anything. He only has one vote on council. Anyway, that's, that's not the core of what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the underlying issue. Who should own the sports team's venue? Who sh and, and by virtue of that, who should be building it and paying for it? Okay. So there's a couple of possibilities here. One, the city could own the venue. Uh, they could build it, own it, whatever. And then they rent it to the sports team or sports teams who want to use it. Now this seems great for the sports teams because now they don't have this big asset hanging around their neck. They don't have to maintain the building. They don't have to do, deal with building operations and so on. Uh, but it also means they don't have anything anchoring them to the city. So uh, they could pick, pick up stakes and leave at any time uh, by vacating their lease. So that doesn't seem like a good option for the city. And here's the thing. Something as specialized as a hockey arena, like a a major league hockey uh, arena or, or, you know, stadium or something like that, something as specialized as that is of limited value for other uh, purposes. It's difficult to find a new prime or impossible to find a new primary tenant if the one it was built for leaves. So, where is the upside to the city for building the arena and and owning it uh, and then just leasing it to the sports team? There is no upside. Okay, uh, this is the problem, and and we see the same issues with the sport the venues built for Olympics. Uh, you know where there's no use for them afterwards, so they rot you know, and they decay, and it's a wasted investment. Uh, another possibility is the sports team themselves pay for it and own it. Now, that does uh, pose, uh, or pose some uh, management issues for the team and that they have to maintain and operate their building. But that's not all that ridiculous because other companies have to do that for their own operations as well. 
you, you know, like a, a car manufacturer has to build and maintain their factory. It's not reasonable to expect the city to build a car factory for the, and then lease it to the car company. That, this is... This is exactly the same thing. The sports team needs their venue to operate. They therefore they they need to have a venue, and they should be willing to pay for it and operate it. Uh, now, uh, it also means that they have a tie to the physical location because they have a big asset around their neck. That for the same reason that it's a bad value for the city because they can't really lease it to somebody else easily. Uh, it's a bad risk. It, it's a big, it, it's a difficult thing to divest of if they wish to leave, which means they end up with uh, an incentive to stay and make things work, if at all possible, because it's a lot simpler. But it does mean they have the problem of coming up with the financing to build the building. And that can be a problem, even for the largest corporations. So you can see why they might have some issues there. And you can certainly see why they want to uh, come and get a handout, potentially. Now, anyone who can possibly get a handout will, will want one. Uh, because anything that reduces their costs is good for their bottom line. And, you know, back briefly back to this uh, uh, hockey arena for Calgary, this new arena for the Flames, that's exactly what the Flames uh, ownership people are trying for. Anything to make their bottom line look bigger. Uh, so any handout means, uh, from the city, means that money they don't have to spend so their balance sheet looks better. Now, uh, it, which one should be the case? Well, uh, if it's a less, if it's something where there is a reasonably reasonable likelihood of sufficient ongoing demand for the venue, other than the primary tenant, say in this case the Flames, enough that the building could operations could be sustainable uh, with you know and not turn a loss then it might make sense for the city to own it. But that's not likely going to be the case. So uh, realistically, the sports team that wants the facility must be the one to find all the financing, do, do all the legwork, and, do, and, and manage the construction and build the thing and own it in the end. And then they can rent it out as they see fit to other uh, other operations, uh, you know, as as based on availability and so on. So they can defray their own costs for by renting out the venue for events and so on. Uh, so uh, so here here's the the thing. So uh, basically, I'm saying if the city pays for it, they must own it. If the, if the team pays for it, they must own it. Now, of course, you've got a potential hybrid financing operation or hybrid uh, operation where, say, the city puts a certain amount in and the team puts a certain amount in and, and ownership is balanced based on those percentages. And that is potentially reasonable as well. But the same considerations apply. It's not a good investment for the city if there's a risk that the building is not going to be used for somebody other than the primary tenant if the primary tenant goes away. So, obviously, my take is that the team should be paying for their venue. So, in this case, the Flames should be footing the bill for their arena. Especially since they want to be owning the damn thing when it's built, okay? And here's the thing. There should be no tax breaks that are not applicable to everybody else. Uh, there should be no incentives offered. Nothing. They should have to abide by the same taxation rules as everybody else. Uh, so basically I'm saying no handouts. Now... That's not to say there's nothing the city can do to make things more palatable. 
if the team is having trouble putting together the financing to build their facility, and there's a reasonable assurance that they will stay solvent for a reasonable length of time, then a loan or a mortgage situation makes sense. In which case, the city can advance the, some, some portion of the construction costs on the understanding that it gets paid back. And that just like any other loan agreement or loan arrangement, right? Uh, in, in which case the city then becomes a lender and they, they need to get their money back, possibly possibly plus interest. Now, in this case, I would consider an interest-free loan to be reasonable because it's so at least, you know, as long as it's going to get paid back. But there has to be some penalty to the uh, team if they don't make the payments. So I'm thinking, you know, interest-free, unless you fail to pay, in which case interest the crews on the payment that's late, uh, you know, and a uh, an incentive to pay, and this can all be codified in a contract, and there's there's no issues with that. That is a reasonable option, and as I understand it, that's part of what's on the table with this local arena thing. Uh, the city is, is part of what the city is offering. Uh, now, of course, the, the Flames people have, have just broken off negotiations and they're basically trying to hold the city hostage, saying, well, we might move if you don't do this. And quite frankly, the city should just stare them down, play the game of chicken, and don't swerve. Uh, moving is a riskier proposition than they're letting on, and they're not likely to do so. Uh, simply because the city won't play ball and give them the handout. But anyway, the whole point is uh, the city should not be paying for a facility that's going to be owned and operated by a private operation. Simply put, uh, I don't care how much economic impact the Flames, for instance, have on the city of Calgary. I don't care what magical thinking uh, leads anyone to think about economic uh, impacts and, and so on, or uh, how, uh, yeah, the city giving us the handout won't really cost anything in the uh, long term or whatever. Uh, I don't care about any of that. It's not relevant. The city needs its uh, resources to run the city. And corporate welfare has no place in city operations. And quite frankly, corporate welfare has no place at any government level. But, uh, you know, so they, they, maybe they can't raise the money by getting a free handout from, uh, from the city. That doesn't mean they can't raise the money through other means. It's the same way any other corporation raises a huge amount of money for a huge project. Uh, you can't tell me uh, some company or other building a massive skyscraper is footing the entire bill with no investors, with no partners. It's just not likely. So this is the same thing. You get partners in your arena project the same way you get partners in any other project. Now, one of those partners might be the city. As long as you're not asking for a handout, as long as it's money that's going to get paid back. And remember that just because the city is not putting any money directly into the arena projects, for instance, into a sports venue, it doesn't mean they have no costs associated with the project. This is the other important thing that all this magical thinking forgets about. Uh, it doesn't matter who builds the venue, the city has to deal with infrastructure around it. That's transportation. That's water. That's sewer. You know, that, that sort of thing. They have to deal with all of that. They have to deal with the zoning around it. They have to deal with, uh, with uh, transportation, uh, public transit. They have to deal with all of that stuff. And that does not come at zero cost. 
uh, they have to they have to do their part. They have to to uh, build the infrastructure to the the area. They have to maintain that. So the city is not getting a sports venue for free, even if the sports team pays for it entirely themselves. The city still has to deal with the infrastructure uh, uh, around it. And that is not free. Uh, and then this is a, a, a key thing as well. So uh, if you're going to build a new venue in an area that's basically undeveloped or not developed for something like that, there's a huge infrastructure investment required to make that area functional. And the city is going to have to foot most of the bill for that either immediately or down the road. So, uh, again, it's still not reasonable that the city should be the one footing even a large chunk of the bill for a new sports venue. Uh, quite frankly, if you're the one that needs it, you come up with a way to pay for it. Sure, you can talk to the city, say, will you invest or what kind of a deal will you give me? But the city should not give them a handout. And there should, for instance, be no exemptions for taxes at all, period. So there you have it. Uh, and here's the thing. Private uh, investment and funding for NHL arenas even does work and has been done in other cities. So there's no reason it can't work here. So, you know, here, you know, let's just say, let's stop handing out money to private corporations on the uh, magical thinking that it's somehow better for us if we do than if we don't. Uh, they need it. They should pay for it. Period. End of story. And if they don't think they can make, th make it work without the handout, and they're going to put... Pull, pack up their toys and go home, then let them pack up their toys and go home. I think you'll find that almost anybody that's threatening that is not serious because packing up their toys and going home means they're out of business. So, uh, seriously, there's a lot more leverage on this, the city side than anyone wants you to think. Um, just because a city says, no, we're not giving you a handout, doesn't mean the sports team is going to pick up stakes. That is an expensive and difficult proposition. So, anyway, that's probably enough on that. Uh, you know, I'll probably just end up going in circles and off on tangents, so I'll leave it there. So if you liked the video, or you didn't, leave a like or a dislike. Uh, whichever, you know, it makes no difference to me. Just give me an idea if you like or dislike the video. Uh, if you want to be notified of future videos, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. After all, you're not going to get notified of anything if you don't ask for it. And if you've watched this far, thanks for watching.